What's up, everybody? So, so 1.6, we take a little bit of a directional turn away from angles, and we're now going to talk about two-dimensional figures. And so we're going to talk about figures that have straight segments or are made up of only straight lines, and then we're going to talk about circles, we're going to talk about perimeter, and area. Those are the main things we're going to talk about in 1.6. So in order to understand two-dimensional figures in the beginning, we have to know what a polygon is. We are going to deal with all different types of polygons. Normally, we deal with them in very specific ways, like we'll only work with triangles, we'll only work with quadrilaterals, all right? But it's important to understand just the gist of what, a, what makes a polygon, because a polygon is a very general term. So a polygon... Uh, the term polygon is received from the Greek word meaning many angles and polygons are all comprised of segments that are straight lines and when you connect them they create angles so a polygon is a closed figure formed by segments that only intersect at their endpoints so polygons cannot crisscross they can't have any rounded edges there can't be any openings, so they have to be an enclosed figure. So here's a few examples. All right, now this diagram right here is a polygon. This is a polygon. This is not a polygon, and this is not a polygon, and we'll talk about why. So polygons, just like angles, are made up of vertices and sides. But instead of there being an opening like this with an angle, we just connect them. So every spot where two sides meet, that's a vertex. So in this case, there are A, B, C, D, and E, five vertices. There are also five sides, and that's what's always true about polygons. The number of vertices will always equal the number of sides. The next figure, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And as you can see, there are also seven sides. The next figure, the reason why that one is not a polygon, even though it has straight edges, this point right here where they intersect, so notice how there's those points as well. They cannot crisscross like that. So that means that is not a polygon. Now, the triangles by themselves are polygons, but that figure as a whole is not a polygon. And then finally, that fourth figure, this is not a polygon because of this rounded side. There can't be any rounded edges for polygons. Now, each poly polygons themselves can either be categorized as convex and concave. So convex is if I were to extend the sides, none of those sides will intersect inside my figure. And here's what I mean by that. So if I were to extend each side, notice that none of those sides are passing. So none of the dotted lines are going through our figure. So that is for convex. As compared to concave, as I extend my sides, notice what happens where we start to get some dotted purple lines on the inside of our figure. Okay, so that is what we call concave. So this figure up here is also concave. One of the easiest ways to remember convex versus concave is that concave has sides that cave in. So normally this side would be kind of connecting right there, but that is caving in, creating kind of like this empty space. So concave has at least one side caving in. That's an easy way to determine. So a big takeaway from this page is that polygons are made up of vertices and sides. All the sides have to be what we call straight edges. They can't crisscross they can only connect from at one point, and there can't be any rounded edges, and finally there can't be any openings, right? So what I mean by openings is, 
So even though we have straight edges and vertices, that figure is not closed off, like the box is open. So that is not considered a polygon. We'd have to connect it just like that. Classifying polygons. Okay, so we name polygons by the number of sides. Now, you guys technically don't have to memorize these, but they are going to be referenced by side quite a bit. And it's not too hard. So what I want you to think is, what is the minimum number of sides that we need in order to create a polygon? Remember, it has to be straight edges, uh, no rounding, and it has to be an enclosed figure. So hopefully you said three, because two is not going to work, okay? Because the reason, guys, why two is not going to work, if you ever think about a fence there's or a gate or a backyard or an enclosed picket or a box, there's never been a box that only has two sides, okay? So, or not a box, a fence, I mean. So the minimum number of sides we need to be able to create a polygon is three, and each time we go up in number of sides that's going to have a special name now we're only going to cover up to 12 for right now so i think we all know what most of these are okay three is a triangle four is a quadrilateral now a lot of people think four they think rectangle a rectangle is a subcategory of a quadrilateral quad meaning four just like a square is a subcategory of quadrilateral five is a pentagon six is hexagon Seven is heptagon, eight octagon, nine nonagon, ten decagon, eleven hendecagon, and twelve is dodecagon. So, guys, you can always come back to fill out that chart. Um, and again, it's not mandatory that you memorize them, but you probably want to know at least up till ten, I would say, for sure. So, from three to ten, pretty easy to memorize. And then eventually the end gone, that's like when we get up to like 30 sides, like there's no special name for a 30 sided polygon. So what you do is you just call it a 30 gone. All right. Next up, we have a couple of vocabulary terms. So we have equilateral and equal angular. And these two terms are used to describe polygons. So equilateral means all sides of the polygon are congruent. So like a square. All four sides of a square are congruent, so that means it's equilateral. The other term is equiangular. Equiangular means all the angles of a polygon are congruent. Now, if a figure is both equilateral and equiangular, meaning all the sides are congruent and all the angles are congruent, then that means that that figure is what we call regular. So a regular figure means that all angles and all sides are congruent. So a square is a good example of a regular polygon. All four sides are the same, and all four of the angles on the inside of it are right angles. So we're going to take a look at two little drawings here. And I don't, no need to copy these down if you didn't print out my outline. Just kind of follow along. So it says, classify the figures by side as being convex or concave, equilateral, equiangular, regular, or irregular. So when we first look at it, we want to classify it by sides. We want to count the number of sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that has six sides, so that's going to be a heptagon. Excuse me, a hexagon. My fault. Okay. Then let's look at, is it convex or concave? Well, it's pretty easy to see. This side's caving in, so that means it's going to be concave. Next is, is it equilateral? Well, if I look at my markings, I see that all of my sides have a single dash, so that means all my sides are congruent, so that means it is equilateral. But then I'm going to look on the inside, I notice that these two are both the same with the single dash, but then I have two with a double dash, and I have one with a triple dash. So that's showing us, based on the markings, that we have three different angle measures. These are the same, then these are the same, but this one's completely different from the other four. So that means it is not equiangular, which by then means it's not regular, so that would be called irregular. Let's look at our next figure. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, another hexagon. Didn't do that on purpose, sorry. But you get the idea. And let's kind of look at it. It's, it's equilateral. Also notice that all of the angles have one arc on them. So it, it's also equiangular. Now here's the thing. If it's equilateral and equiangular, that makes it regular, right? So you only have to write regular. You don't have to write that it's equilateral and equiangular. You can just write regular because that implies both. And then finally, that is convex. There's no sides caving in at all. So that was just a quick little review for some of you of the different types of polygons. Up next, we're going to talk about, which hopefully is review, the perimeter and circumference and area of some of our basic shapes. So all of these you should have seen already. I cross my fingers, hopefully. So our basic shapes that we're going to look at are a triangle, a square, a rectangle, and a circle. So perimeter, just quick review, is the total length of all sides of a polygon. So the total distance around a polygon. Circumference, kind of the same thing as perimeter, but circumference only applies to circles. So it's the perimeter of a circle or the distance around a circle. Area is the number of square units that covers a two-dimensional space. Okay, so... What I mean by that, right, is if I had a rectangle, imagine that there's a bunch of one by one little squares. So what I mean by one by one, so like tiny little one by one squares, one, one unit wide by one unit tall. So area would be how many of those one by one little units fit inside that rectangle. So again, it's the number of square units that fit inside a two dimensional figure. So there's our four shapes that we're going to look at. Again, we have square, triangle, rectangle, and circle. And so we're going to talk about how do we find perimeter and area and circumference of these figures. Hopefully you know the formulas for all these. If not, that's okay. We're going to go over them. So with our triangle, the first thing you have to realize is that a triangle has a height. Now, the height can be a few different measurements but it's all depending on where you establish your base. So in this instance, I'm establishing my base is this bottom, the, as the orientation goes of this diagram, it's the bottom of the triangle. The height of a triangle is always the perpendicular distance from the base to what we call the opposite vertex, which would be this guy right here. Now perpendicular meaning it has to have a right angle, okay? so. I find the perimeter by adding up all three sides. The area of a triangle is one half base times height. Now we'll talk later about how to find these lengths if they're not given to you. We use it's called Pythagorean theorem. But the main thing you gotta understand is that perimeter is adding up all three sides and area is just one half base times height. For a square, we know that it has four right angles. We know that all four sides are the exact same. So for the perimeter of a square, it's just four times S or S plus S plus S plus S. S is representing the side length of the square. For the area, uh, it's just side times side or side squared. You could also use the same formula for the rectangle, which is base times height, right? So think about that that technically you're using the same exact formulas for perimeter and area for rectangles and squares. However, remember a rectangle, the opposite sides are congruent, but, so what I mean by that guys is opposite sides are congruent, but not all four sides are congruent. So that's why with, whoopsies. That's why with a rectangle, um, we use what's called length and width. Okay, so you have your length, so this again would be my length up here, and then your width. Or you can also think base and height, they're the same thing. So for our perimeter, it's L plus L plus W plus W, or 2L plus 2W. And then our area is just length times width, and again guys, you can use the term base times height if you want to. 
Finally, we have our circle. Now for circles, we use what's called the radius. The radius is the distance from the center out to the edge, or that dotted red line. And with circles, we also use something called pi, a pi symbol. And our pi, when we round it, is 3.14. So circumference of a circle, or the distance around the circle, is 2 pi r. 2 times pi times the radius, or you can also use pi times diameter. Diameter is the distance all the way across the circle. The diameter is double the length of the radius. And then area is pi r squared. All right, so those are just a few problems, or a few formulas that you need to know as we kind of move our way through the basic two-dimensional figures. And there's just a little chart to show you what all the variables are representing. But you probably know that already. So let's get into some quick examples um, because I don't want this video to get too much longer than it already is. So let's find the perimeter of our rectangle. Well, I know this is 6.7 at the top. I know this is 4.2. So my perimeter is going to be 2 times 4.2 plus 2 times 6.7. So the total distance around this. 4.2 times 2, that's 8.4. 6.7 times 2 is 13.4, add them together, you get 21.8 feet. And for our area, it's just 6.7 times 4.2. And that gets us 28.14. And remember, for area, because we're talking little squares, that's square units. For our circle, the diameter is 6.2, so that means our radius is half that amount, or 3.1. So for my circumference, that's 2 pi times r, 3.14. Now remember, pi, we usually use 3.14 value, so it's going to be 2 times 3.14 times 3.1 for an answer of 19.5 centimeters. Our area is pi r squared, so pi 3.1 squared. 3.1 squared is 9.61. I'm going to times that by 3.14. So my area is 30.2 centimeters squared. And last but not least, let's do the perimeter and area of our triangle. Well, perimeter is just going to be 9.5 plus 9.5 plus 10.2. 9.5 plus 9.5 plus 10.2 is 29.2 inches. And then our area is going to be our base times our height times one half. So one half, 10.2 times eight. Now what I always like to do is if I have an even number in there, like one half and eight, and I'll do that times eight, so I get 10.2 times four. And then I can just do 10.2 times four, and I get 40.8. So my area is 40.8 inches squared, okay? Last problem I want to show you, because you do have two problems like this on your homework, is how do you find the perimeter and area of something you have to graph? So the first thing you want to do is, I took these points and I made a graph. You can use graph paper. You could maybe do it on the computer. You can make a graph on your own, or you could try to not to use graph paper. So the next thing I want to do from that is I want to find my lengths. Now, I've got this nice straight two segments that I can easily count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I know this is seven units. One, two, three, four, five. That's five units. And the tricky one is this guy right here, right? So for that, you're going to have to use the distance formula. Unless you know the Pythagorean theorem. If you know the Pythagorean theorem, you could use that here to find this length. Um, but we haven't really fully talked about that. So use the distance formula. I'm not going to write the whole thing out here because I don't want to keep going. But So our distance formula is x2 
minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. You would use this co coordinate and this coordinate, all right? And then finally, for my area. Now, for area, remember, it's base times height. Well, the height has to be perpendicular to the base. Well, this is a right angle. So this would be my base. This would be my height. So area equals 1 half base times height. Please ask me questions if you have any. Um, we are going to have a quiz next Thursday. So M Monday and Tuesday is going to be review. That's all I got for you.